History of Asia Part 01 The history of Asia can be seen as the collective history of several distinct peripheral coastal regions such as East Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East linked by the interior mass of the Eurasian steppe. See History of the Middle East and History of the Indian Subcontinent for further details. The coastal periphery was the home to some of the world's earliest known civilizations and religions, with each of the three regions developing early civilizations around fertile river valleys. These valleys were fertile because the soil there was rich and could bear many root crops. The civilizations in Mesopotamia, India, and China shared many similarities and likely exchanged technologies and ideas such as mathematics and the wheel. Other notions such as that of writing likely developed individually in each area. Cities, states, and then empires developed in these lowlands. The steppe region had long been inhabited by mounted nomads, and from the central steppes, they could reach all areas of the Asian continent. The northern part of the continent, covering much of Siberia was also inaccessible to the steppe nomads due to the dense forests and the tundra. These areas in Siberia were very sparsely populated. The center and periphery were kept separate by mountains and deserts. The Caucasus, Himalaya, Karakum Desert, and Gobi Desert formed barriers that the steppe horsemen could only cross with difficulty. While technologically and culturally the city dwellers were more advanced, they could do little militarily to defend against the mounted hordes of the steppe. However, the lowlands did not have enough open grasslands to support a large horse-bound force. Thus the nomads who conquered states in the Middle East were soon forced to adapt to the local societies. The spread of Islam waved the Islamic Golden Age and the Timurid Renaissance, which later influenced the age of Islamic gunpowder empires. Asia's history features major developments seen in other parts of the world, as well as events that have affected those other regions. These include the trade of the Silk Road, which spread cultures, languages, religions, and diseases throughout Afro-Eurasian trade. Another major advancement was the innovation of gunpowder in medieval China, later developed by the gunpowder empires, mainly by the Mughals and Safavids, which led to advanced warfare through the use of guns. A report by archaeologist Rakesh Tiwari on Lahiradewa, India shows new C-14 datings that range between 900 and 800 BC associated with rice, making Lahiradewa the earliest Neolithic site in entire South Asia. Settled life emerged on the subcontinent in the western margins of the Indus River Alluvium approximately 9,000 years ago evolving gradually into the Indus Valley civilization of the 3rd millennium BC. Gobekli Teep is a Neolithic site in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey. Dated to the pre-pottery Neolithic, between circa 9500 and 800 BC, the site comprises a number of large circular structures supported by massive stone pillars the world's oldest known megaliths. The prehistoric Beifudi site near Yixin in Hebei province, China, contains relics of a culture contemporaneous with the Xishan and Zinglongwa cultures of about 800 to 700 BC, Neolithic cultures east of the Taihang Mountains, filling in an archaeological gap between the two northern Chinese cultures. 
The total excavated area is more than 1,200 square meters and the collection of Neolithic findings at the site consists of two phases. Around 5500 BC the Halafian culture appeared in Lebanon, Israel, Syria, Anatolia, and northern Mesopotamia, based upon dryland agriculture. In southern Mesopotamia were the alluvial plains of Suma and Elam. Since there was little rainfall, irrigation systems were necessary. The Ubaid culture flourished from 5500 BC. The Chalcolithic period, or Copper Age, began about 4500 BC, then the Bronze Age began about 3500 BC, replacing the Neolithic cultures. The Indus Valley Civilization, IVC, was a Bronze Age civilization, 3300 to 1300 BC, mature period 2600 to 1900 BC, which was centered mostly in the western part of the Indian subcontinent. It is considered that an early form of Hinduism was performed during this civilization. Some of the great cities of this civilization include Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, which had a high level of town planning and arts. The cause of the destruction of these regions around 1700 BC is debatable, although evidence suggests it was caused by natural disasters, especially flooding. This era marks Vedic period in India, which lasted from roughly 1500 to 500 BC. During this period, the Sanskrit language developed and the Vedas were written, epic hymns that told tales of gods and wars. This was the basis for the Vedic religion, which would eventually sophisticate and develop into Hinduism. China and Vietnam were also centers of metalworking. Dating back to the Neolithic age, the first bronze drums, called the Dong Sun drums have been uncovered in and around the Red River Delta regions of Vietnam and southern China. These relate to the prehistoric Dong Sun culture of Vietnam. Song Die Bronze Drum Surface, Dong Sun Culture, Vietnam. In Ban Chiang, Thailand, Southeast Asia, bronze artifacts have been discovered dating to 2100 BC. In Nyongan, Burma bronze tools have been excavated along with ceramics and stone artifacts. Dating is still currently broad, 3500 to 500 BC. The Achaemenid dynasty of the Persian Empire, founded by Cyrus the Great, ruled an area from Greece and Turkey to the Indus River and Central Asia during the 6th to 4th centuries BC. Persian politics included a tolerance for other cultures, a highly centralized government, and significant infrastructure developments. Later, in Darius the Great's rule, the territories were integrated, a bureaucracy was developed, nobility were assigned military positions, tax collection was carefully organized, and spies were used to ensure the loyalty of regional officials. The primary religion of Persia at this time was Zoroastrianism, developed by the philosopher Zoroaster. It introduced an early form of monotheism to the area. The religion banned animal sacrifice and the use of intoxicants in rituals, and introduced the concept of spiritual salvation through personal moral action, an end time, and both general and particular judgment with a heaven or hell. These concepts would heavily influence later emperors and the masses. It was itself heavily influenced by earlier much older ancient religious beliefs and practices dating to the beginning of known history and before. 
The Persian Empire was successful in establishing peace and stability throughout the Middle East and were a major influence in art, politics, affecting Hellenistic leaders, and religion. Alexander the Great conquered this dynasty in the 4th century BC, creating the brief Hellenistic period. He was unable to establish stability and after his death, Persia broke into small, weak dynasties including the Seleucid Empire, followed by the Parthian Empire. By the end of the Classical Age, Persia had been reconsolidated into the Sassanid Empire, also known as the Second Persian Empire. The Roman Empire would later control parts of Western Asia. The Seleucid, Parthian and Sassanid dynasties of Persia dominated Western Asia for centuries. The Maurya and Gupta empires are called the Golden Age of India and were marked by extensive inventions and discoveries in science, technology, art, religion, and philosophy that crystallized the elements of what is generally known as Indian culture. The religions of Hinduism and Buddhism, which began in Indian subcontinent, were an important influence on South, East and Southeast Asia. By 600 BC, India had been divided into 17 regional states that would occasionally feud amongst themselves. In 327 BC, Alexander the Great came to India with a vision of conquering the whole world. He crossed northwestern India and created the province Bactria but could not move further because his army wanted to go back to their family. Shortly prior, the soldier Chandragupta Maurya began to take control of the Ganges River and soon established the Maurya Empire. The Maurya Empire, Sanskrit, Maurya Rava, was the geographically extensive and powerful empire in ancient India, ruled by the Maurayan dynasty from 321 to 185 BC. It was one of the world's largest empires in its time, stretching to the Himalayas in the north, what is now Assam in the east, probably beyond modern Pakistan in the west and annexing Balochistan and much of what is now Afghanistan, at its greatest extent. South of Maurayan Empire was the Tamilakam an independent country dominated by three dynasties, the Pandians, Cholas and Cheras. The government established by Chandragupta was led by an autocratic king, who primarily relied on the military to assert his power. It also applied the use of a bureaucracy and even sponsored a postal service. Chandragupta's grandson, Ashoka, greatly extended the empire by conquering most of modern-day India, save for the southern tip. He eventually converted to Buddhism, though, and began a peaceful life where he promoted the religion as well as humane methods throughout India. The Maurya Empire would disintegrate soon after Ashoka's death and was conquered by the Kushan invaders from the northwest, establishing the Kushan Empire. Their conversion to Buddhism caused the religion to be associated with foreigners and therefore a decline in its popularity occurred. The Kushan Empire would fall apart by 220 AD creating more political turmoil in India. Then in 320, the Gupta Empire, Sanskrit, Gupta Ravanya, was established and covered much of the Indian subcontinent. Founded by Maharaja Sri Gupta, the dynasty was the model of a classical civilization. Gupta kings united the area primarily through negotiation of local leaders and families as well as strategical intermarriage. Their rule covered less land than the Maurya Empire, but established the greatest stability. In 535, 
The empire ended when India was overrun by the Hunas. Since 1029 BC, the Zhu dynasty, Chinese, Pinyin, Zhu Chao, Wei, Giles, Chou Chao, TT, had existed in China and it would continue to until 258 BC. The Zhu dynasty had been using a feudal system by giving power to local nobility and relying on their loyalty in order to control its large territory. As a result, the Chinese government at this time tended to be very decentralized and weak, and there was often little the emperor could do to resolve national issues. Nonetheless, the government was able to retain its position with the creation of the Mandate of Heaven, which could establish an emperor as divinely chosen to rule. The Jew additionally discouraged the human sacrifice of the preceding eras and unified the Chinese language. Finally, the Jew government encouraged settlers to move into the Yangtze River Valley, thus creating the Chinese Middle Kingdom. But by 500 BC, its political stability began to decline due to repeated nomadic incursions and internal conflict derived from the fighting princes and families. This was lessened by the many philosophical movements, starting with the life of Confucius. His philosophical writings, called Confucianism, concerning the respect of elders and of the state would later be popularly used in the Han Dynasty. Additionally, Laozi's concepts of Taoism, including yin and yang and the innate duality and balance of nature and the universe, became popular throughout this period. Nevertheless, the Zhu dynasty eventually disintegrated as the local nobles began to gain more power and their conflict devolved into the Warring States period, from 402 to 201 BC. One leader eventually came on top, Qin Shi Huang, Chinese, SH Huangdi, who overthrew the last Zhu emperor and established the Qin dynasty. The Qin dynasty, Chinese, Pinyin, Qin Chao, was the first ruling dynasty of imperial China, lasting from 221 to 207 BC. The new emperor abolished the feudal system and directly appointed a bureaucracy that would rely on him for power. Huang's imperial forces crushed any regional resistance, and they furthered the Chinese Empire by expanding down to the South China Sea and Northern Vietnam. Greater organization brought a uniform tax system, a national census, regulated road building, and cart width, standard measurements, standard coinage, and an official written and spoken language. Further reforms included new irrigation projects, the encouragement of silk manufacturing, and, most famously, the beginning of the construction of the Great Wall of China, designed to keep out the nomadic raiders who'd constantly badger the Chinese people. However, Shi Huang was infamous for his tyranny, forcing the Boers to build the wall, ordering heavy taxes, and severely punishing all who opposed him. He oppressed Confucians and promoted legalism, the idea that people were inherently evil, and that a strong, forceful government was needed to control them. Legalism was infused with realistic, logical views and rejected the pleasures of educated conversation as frivolous. All of this made Shi Huang extremely unpopular with the people. As the Qin began to weaken, various factions began to fight for control of China. The Han Dynasty, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Pinyin, Han Chao, 206 BC, 220 AD, was the second imperial dynasty of China, 
preceded by the Qin dynasty and succeeded by the Three Kingdoms, 220 to 265 AD. Spanning over four centuries, the period of the Han dynasty is considered a golden age in Chinese history. One of the Han dynasty's greatest emperors, Emperor Wu of Han, established a peace throughout China comparable to the Pax Romana seen in the Mediterranean a hundred years later. To this day, China's majority ethnic group refers to itself as the Han people. The Han dynasty was established when two peasants succeeded in rising up against Shi Huang's significantly weaker successor son. The new Han government retained the centralization and bureaucracy of the Qin, but greatly reduced the repression seen before. They expanded their territory into Korea, Vietnam, and Central Asia, creating an even larger empire than the Qin. The Han developed contacts with the Persian Empire in the Middle East and the Romans, through the Silk Road, with which they were able to trade many commodities, primarily silk. Many ancient civilizations were influenced by the Silk Road, which connected China, India, the Middle East and Europe. Han emperors like Wu also promoted Confucianism as the national religion although it is debated by theologians as to whether it is defined as such or as a philosophy. Shrines devoted to Confucius were built and Confucian philosophy was taught to all scholars who entered the Chinese bureaucracy. The bureaucracy was further improved with the introduction of an examination system that selected scholars of high merit. These bureaucrats were often upper-class people educated in special schools, but whose power was often checked by the lower class brought into the bureaucracy through their skill. The Chinese imperial bureaucracy was very effective and highly respected by all in the realm and would last over 2,000 years. The Han government was highly organized and it commanded the military, judicial law, which used a system of courts and strict laws, agricultural production, the economy, and the general lives of its people. The government also promoted intellectual philosophy, scientific research, and detailed historical records. However, despite all of this impressive stability, central power began to lose control by the turn of the common era. As the Han Dynasty declined, many factors continued to pummel it into submission until China was left in a state of chaos. By 100 AD, philosophical activity slowed, and corruption ran rampant in the bureaucracy. Local landlords began to take control as the scholars neglected their duties, and this resulted in heavy taxation of the peasantry. Taoists began to gain significant ground and protested the decline. They started to proclaim magical powers and promised to save China with them. The Taoist Yellow Turban Rebellion in 184, led by rebels in yellow scarves, failed but was able to weaken the government. The aforementioned Huns combined with diseases killed up to half of the population and officially ended the Han Dynasty by 220. The ensuing period of chaos was so terrible it lasted for three centuries, where many weak regional rulers and dynasties failed to establish order in China. This period of chaos and attempts at order is commonly known as that of the Six Dynasties. The first part of this included the Three Kingdoms which started in 220 and describes the brief and weak successor dynasties that followed the Han. In 265, the Jin Dynasty of China was started and this soon split into two different empires in control of northwestern and southeastern China. 
In 420, the conquest and abdication of those two dynasties resulted in the first of the Southern and Northern dynasties. The Northern and Southern dynasties passed through until finally, by 557, the Northern Ju dynasty ruled the North and the Chen dynasty ruled the South.